and today on Mink Life Motivation Live, we are really kind of tackling that to-do list of yours. Is it or overwhelming or maybe even bothersome? Well, today's show is all about how to systemize your business. Let's get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So happy Thank you're here. You. <laughs> so today on the show, we have Linda Shaw and Natalie Clack of our Mink Life Motivation community. And guess who else is on the show? You are. You are our special guest, and we would love to hear from you. So if you have any comments, feel free to drop them in the chat. We want to hear from you. You are a part of this show. So we are going to dive into the topics. But first, let's get a little more interested or a little bit more information from our co-host on today's topic. Uh, so we'll start with Belinda. I'm going to start with you and I'm going to ask you the question, how has systemizing your business affected you in your entrepreneurial journey? You know what? Systemizing things is absolutely vital. When you have a good system, you uh, you just know where you're heading during the day. So there's no question about, oh, it's 10 o'clock. What have I done so far? At 10 o'clock, you know what you've done. And it's been really a productive day so far. Um, but one of the things that I love most is not only systemizing my work life, but systemizing what I do before work and after work, because I think that they're really good bookends to a day. And whilst systemizing things at work is absolutely crucial and that everybody understands the system, I also pay a lot of attention to either end of that day. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is going to be an interesting conversation because I have two system junkies here. So... Uh... <laughs> And I'm, I'm also a little bit of a system junkie, so this is going to be so much fun to have the conversation. Natalie, uh, can you tell us a little bit about how systemizing your business has affected you on your, your entrepreneurial journey? Well, funnily enough, when I first started out, I was disparate. I'm normally pretty organized with things, but it took me time to catch a bit of a flow. And as a result of taking the time and trouble to sit down and have a look at how I needed to implement systems so I could get on top of admin, follow up, um, follow through. Because, you know, it's a lot of people, but if you do not follow up, it, what was the point of meeting in the first place? So I've really had to take the time and trouble to look and see what systems, like Belinda was saying, I use for my personal life. So that when I get up in the morning, I have a process in place, can get what I need done in my home. And at the same time, run my business, which is from home, using the right systems that fit in. And I still have time for myself as well as can achieve in my business at the same time. So this has been imperative for me. Absolutely. I know. So Mink Life Motivation would not exist if I was not a systems person. <laughs> I mean, the amount of things that we have to get done in such a short period of time is ridiculous. And so without having systems, I don't know that I could have done anything. I couldn't have created the program. I couldn't have created like uh, any of the conferences, right? I could, I could not have achieved so much in such a short period of time had I not actually uh, just sat down stop for a second and figure it out, okay, what is the system that needs to happen here? And when things go wrong, kind of leaning into that. So systems for me has been super epic, which is another reason why I'm so excited for this conversation with the both of you, because I know how strongly this conversation about uh, business processes and like really kind of systemizing yourself uh, has been helpful for all of us. So let's get motivated. And the first question that I kind of want to like really, really dive into is why is it important to start systemizing in the first place? Like if someone's like, yeah, yeah, you say systems, but I want to be in the flow. I'm, 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 I'm not the person for structure. Structure doesn't work for me. Why is systems important in the first place? Uh, and we'll start with you, uh, Belinda. 
I love this question. I absolutely love it because that used to be me. I was that person. <laughs> and I, used to, I was, I truly was. I... <laughs> I used to get busy being busy rather than busy actually doing stuff and creating a system that you can work to and make sure that you are dotting I's and crossing T's and, and having a to-do list at the beginning of the day or the beginning of the week and being able to check off things as you go through is absolutely vital. Otherwise, you just keep going. Like you start 50,000 things and you finish nothing. Mm-hmm. It's not helpful at all when you're trying to run a business. And also what um, what Natalie said earlier about follow-through. If you meet people at a networking event and you don't follow through with them, you might as well have not gone to the networking event. So, you know, you have to have systems with regard to everything. So that way, when you do get that free time, you can then be in the flow and do whatever you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Natalie, yeah. Ed, did you want to chime in on that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, to chime in on the networking angle, it's all about <laughs> no like and trust. And if I'm not following through, I'm destroying the trust that I have been trying to build with that content. And my mm. favorite part of systems is the fact that I want to scale. How am I going to scale if I have not written down a basic idea of what systems I follow for each of the things that I deliver in my business to my audience, my power partners, my clients. I want to be able to take that list of the system that I've followed and hand it over to someone when I'm not well, when I'm busy, and still have my business continue to deliver on the promises that I've made. So if my systems are not in place and I am not sticking to them, and it's not that you're rigid about it, but you need to have an understanding of what steps you follow in order to follow up on a specific topic or follow through on something that you've made as a promise to someone else mm. or for that matter serving someone as a result of a service you're providing. How do you do that? We're all different and yet you need to be able to make it almost cookie cutter if you want to have a virtual assistant you plug in or a power partner for that matter. Yeah, so uh, I am personally filling this particular question <laughs> today, systemizing it. And truthfully, okay, so truth moment, if you were watching, you were hearing an absolute truth of my life right now. Today, I was not supposed to be on the show. I am technically on vacation. Do you know why I am sitting here on the show today? I mean, I'm excited to be here, don't get me wrong. I love Belinda and I love Natalie. But the reason why I'm here is because I didn't record enough of my systems so that my team can actually run things without me. And that's why I'm sitting here today. So why is it important for you to systemize? Start with systemizing is so that you can enjoy your vacation and let your team do what they need to do to make you look stellar. Now, my team is awesome, but they're only as good as the directions I give them. And like Natalie said, if I don't give them good directions, I can't be mad when they when the process uh, when the product is crap at the end, right? Or when I have to interrupt my vacation because you know I you know something isn't done and it needs to get done, right? And so systemizing is essentially the power in your business, right? We were talking a little bit earlier about chakras, so I don't know if you're a woo-woo out there, we might scare you away a little bit, but we were talking about chakras and we were talking about the solar plex chakra and how it is the power source. It is that wisdom part of uh, your body, right? And your energy system. And that also applies to your business as well, right? It literally applies to your business. And this conversation about business processes <clears throat> and kind of getting yourself systemized is right in that particular that particular part of your business where it's the power source. The better the systems, the better the product. Point blank period, right? Uh, so I want to help people stay inspired, and that's one of the most important parts of the show is kind of letting people know that not only yes, we want you to get motivated to get those systems going, but we want you to understand um, how to keep encouraged and moving forward. And so the question I have for you guys is: How does the lack of understanding of your systems and um, how your systems are performing affect how we move through our life 
and our business. And I know, I know Belinda is like, oh, I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to answer these questions. So I'm going to give it to you, Belinda. And then next time we get to you, Natalie, first. Okay. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, understanding how the systems are performing, everything needs to be assessed, reassessed. It needs to be tweaked if that's the thing that you do, or it needs to sometimes be completely rewritten if it's just not working. Like if nobody else can follow your system, maybe it's not a good system. So um, sometimes they just need to be completely rewritten from scratch, but just start down with, with the basics of what you do. You know, when I go into a business, I talk to them about what's your process for opening up in the morning and closing at night time. It can be as simple as, you unlock the door, you turn off the alarm, you do this, you do that, you do whatever, and then you do the same in reverse on the way out. But if if there's a hiccup in that system somewhere, then maybe that needs re reviewing or readjusting somehow. So I think it's really important to know when your systems are working and the only, the only time they're working is if somebody else can do it when you're not there, which, Monica, is what you were talking about before. And if somebody can't follow your step-by-step, -step, it needs to be looked at. And if it doesn't get looked at, it just creates a, a problem long-term because if, if nobody else can do it other than you, then you're hijacked and you're, um, you know, you're hobbled to the business and, and you don't get to go and leave. Sorry, girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this is I mean, the beautiful part about what we do or what I do is that it's all built around me having fun. I get to hang out with amazing people all the time and have great conversations that stimulate my brain. So even when I'm working, I'm technically not working, but uh, you know, it really is kind of about not like having an understanding of what's working and what's not working so that I can have peace of mind. And mm. I mean, thank God I'm not on the beach somewhere <laughs> or today. Otherwise this would be extremely inconvenient or on a plane even. Right, this is extremely inconvenient. So, uh, Natalie, did you want to uh, chime in on um, how does the lack of understanding of of how your systems are performing affect you when you're moving through your life and business? Well, that really comes down to the importance of tracking um, your processes and their performance. And as you can see with Monica, it's a case of when things fall apart. That's normally when you notice when things aren't working. And if you don't understand how your systems work, you don't know how to fix them, you don't know how to streamline them, they don't even know what they're about, it ends up translating to a lot of issues and disparate problems within your own personal life as well. Because mm. where you're not able to take leave or have a break, you find you're working longer, harder hours because maybe you've got too many steps in your system and you're actually wasting time on things that aren't important. Um, so it really is an important priority to see how those systems are working for you so that you can see where the, what they're doing to the bottom line. Are you focusing on things that are growing your business and increasing your profits? Or are you looking at things that are actually just wasting time um, that you could rather farm out somewhere else or in some cases maybe even cut completely? Um, I myself have spent so much time pivoting myself, pivoting my business, Pivoting what I spend my time on, um, how I show up for events, um, how I high networking power partners, um, how much time am I focusing on the systems that deliver to them? Um, so, yeah, it really is important to understand what your systems are and what the point is having them. Yeah, I, you know, uh, for, for me, really understanding how the systems are performing like natalie said you kind of only know they're not performing when something goes wrong yeah uh, and i am a, a, a complete proponent for when things go wrong that is like cheat codes to life and i know that sounds horrible but i always say i'm the best at failing right because i learn so much from that and i think we all do we all learn way more from learning than we do from success um but what I want you to understand, if I can keep you encouraged, if things aren't going right, you're feeling overwhelmed by that, this is not working. It is substantially easier to fix the system 
than it is to keep mitigating the bad solution that keeps happening from the system, if that makes any sense. The, it is substantially easier for you to take a moment to stop, right, just stop, and just sit, think, organize, and prepare the next round of how you're going to do it than it is for you to keep chugging along things just so exactly how they are and keep having bad results. And if I can encourage anyone to take this moment, just take a moment and realize that your business is speaking to you when it is broken. It's telling you where it needs to be adjusted. It's telling you what it needs. If you are broke, it's telling you there's something, there's something along the process that isn't allowing the money to flow through, right? It's a, it's, it's really that like middle point of like you getting to the other side, right? <clears throat> and so if the finances aren't flowing, if the clients aren't coming in, if wherever there's something where it just seems like we can't keep, we, for some reason people aren't doing this, it's your business telling you something. It's speaking directly to you. And if you can just stop for a second, take a look at it and say, you know what? Somewhere in this system, it's broken and I need to reevaluate. And you have friends like I have, like Natalie and Blenda, where you could literally just sit around and say, okay, here's my problem. Help me figure this out. Then you actually can do something about it. So yes, I'm missing my vacation this time, but I have another two week vacation coming at the end of next quarter. And best believe I'm going to be on it with no problems. <laughs> <laughs> We believe you. We have faith in you. <laughs> no problems. Okay, someone chimed in from Facebook and they said, ooh, when things go wrong, those are cheat codes to life. That's so rich, Monica. Thanks for chiming in there. Uh, and if you have any more comments, please uh, chime in. We Apparently it's working today because we finally got one through. We don't know who that was, but we appreciate you chiming in. Uh, so continue to uh, drop your comments in the chat. Um, so my job to keep this train on time. Uh, and so we're going to move on to our next question. Belinda, I know this is your first time on the show. Are you having a good time? I know it's super early in Australia. It's wonderful. I'm really having a great time. My alarm went very early, but, you know, we, we do what we do to show up and do these things. I know it's really late in uh, in Africa right now, right? So it's uh, it's all relative. We can have these international things and life is great. Yes, yes. Except for the day now, right? Like, <laughs> eyelids, keep them open a little longer. And we have Linda who's like, wait, still trying to get them up. And I'm here in the middle at, you know, it's lunch. <laughs> it's, it's <really> tight. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the kind of community that we are. We are truly global. And this is one of those expressions right away. So uh, let's keep networking. Let's talk a little bit about who should we ask for help when we're trying to improve our systems? Who should we ask for help? Who wants to chime in first? It's like having your finger on the button. Who's it going to be? <laughs> it is. It is. Natalie, do you want to go first this time? I can definitely do that, yes. Um, so the question is, who do we ask? Well, there are a number of players that are out there on the receiving end of your system. And I strongly suggest you have a little look at who those people are and do a bit of research. Get a power partner to test it because they're outside your picture sometimes. They're actually not a part of your business. They're not living in your business. They're not breathing your business necessarily. So they can give you a good outside opinion. Then you need a client and you need to find out, are they getting what they paid for? Are they getting the experience that you want them to have? And you're only going to know that if you find out if that system is working for them. And then somebody that's maybe a friend, a colleague, um, an outside party that you don't really know well. So they're going to give you input without trying to show off and be your best friend. So there's lots of ways to test it, but it's important that you do. And then first and foremost, sit down and test it yourself. Because sometimes we implement the system, we leave it to run by itself, and we don't go back and check in. Is it working? 
are we staying on top of that particular task the system's helping us with? Or is it turning out that somewhere two steps into the process, the calendar link didn't work on that page? There's spending errors you didn't take time to look for. There are so many aspects to your system. Be open to counsel, open to outside opinion, and take the time to check it, because that's what we tend to forget in our rush. And if you were yeah. quick to get it today because it needed to be ready for something you're launching, come back later when you're on holiday. Look again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, one of our co-hosts on the couch said, uh, first thing is not to be afraid to ask, which is so true. I mean, mo most of us think that we have to be brilliant at everything when the reality is we're probably really burning our one zone of genius maybe two or three zones of genius and then there's a bunch of other stuff in business that we actually can't know a hundred percent you know brilliantly and there are other people who like love that so i i i 100 agree there's like a lot yeah. of different players that you need to have in your in your group belinda she didn't really leave us with much but i you know <laughs> go for it the, the, only thing I really, the only thing I really have to add to that is that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some people are really great at creating systems, but other pe the same person may not necessarily be great at following the system. So I, I am a creative genius when it comes to setting up systems for other people, but when it comes to setting up systems for me to follow, that's a whole different story and sometimes it ends a little bit ugly. So really, really, really important to ask for help, to get help, to seek feedback, to pay attention to the feedback, work on all of that stuff until you actually get it how you need it to be for your business. And that's really important if you A, work at home, B, work on your own, C, are trying to... Um, get a VA or somebody else into your business so that it can free up a little bit of your time. Otherwise, you might as well just have a job, right? So we really need to have those systems in place so that we can free ourselves to do the stuff that we really want to be doing. Yeah. And some of us are not so good at that. So asking for help and seeking advice and paying attention to that and tweaking it to the best of our ability is gold. Yes. Yes, I, you know, I, I will say it again. The faster you get comfortable with people telling you you suck, the um, more amazing you will be at actually not sucking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> almost, you know, when I was when I was building all of the things, I, I was I came at it from a scientific point of view, right? I was like, okay, scientists don't believe like you have a hypothesis, and then the concept is to test where it's bad or where it doesn't work or how it isn't true right mm -hmm. not like oh i have proof it works i'm good right it's like no does it work over and over again something's going to break this what is the variable that's going to break this yeah. and and so when i started creating things like motivation for me i was like who's going to break this what is the personality type that's going to break this what is the the learning process that's going to fake um, break this like who when is this not going to work for someone and who is that person going to be and i'm always like are you the one are you the one who's going to break <laughs> it are you the one who's going to tell me this i'm full of crap and all of this is for nothing like who's that person and i was like eagerly trying to find that person and what i i never got that person it always worked but what i did get was no actually it's brilliant but i would probably do just this a little different to make it better. And that is cold, right? Is is really being able Absolutely. to hear when you're not good or be seeking out that like, well, what's not good about it? As opposed to like, is it good? And I know that a lot of that comes from our insecurities, right? Like we want people to tell validate us that we're we're good, yeah. or, you know, this is what we're doing. But we were all divinely placed in these positions for a reason. And the validation does help our ego. Can't lie. It makes us feel really good. <laughs> it's like, yes, I'm a genius. Thank you. Right? I <laughs> love that. But it also does not teach us anything. Anytime someone tells me I'm awesome, there's nothing for me to do. Well, I've arrived. 
Let me go on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you can't because your system doesn't work yet <laughs> it's not working right and so no. that, that being comfortable and almost seeking out like in a weird kind of what is it when you like seek when you seek pain <laughs> uh, <what's that> word? <laughs> when you seek pain like in that kind of a way it's like i i it's need not you to is it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> If you seek out like the negative feedback in that way, you will get so much, like you just get so much more from people. And I, you know, I, I always say question, comments, rude remarks. And people are like, why are you asking for rude remarks? That's so, <laughs> why would you invite that negative energy? And I'm like, it's just feedback. It's yeah. just feedback. Yeah. It's just information. And if it's just information, it doesn't hurt my feelings. It only makes me better, right? Um, I'm excited. Like, you wouldn't be mad at someone if they told you you had toilet paper on your shoe. <laughs> Unless they did it loud. <laughs> right? You have toilet paper on your shoe. And even if someone did it loudly, I'd be like, thanks. Right? Have fun oh with God. it. Right. Yeah. Clean your teeth. It's like, oh man, I forgot to put the steak in there too for later, right? Like <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy the feedback because it's going to make you better. Because if you didn't know the broccoli yeah. was there, you'd be walking around thinking that you're looking a certain way. You're not really looking that yeah. way. And so I'm a creative speller and I've said it many times. Yes, creative speller. That means I misspell things to the traditional English language all the time. Uh, I, I, you call it misspelling. I call it creative, you know, tomato, <laughs> tomato. Uh, but I think it's really important for you to understand that, like, like they were saying earlier, when it's not your strength, there is always someone out there who it is their strength. And I love yep. when people point out, you have a typo. That means you read it. Yes. That's a win. That's a win. Silver lining, I got you to read it. <laughs> thanks for finding it. I'll fix that, but thanks for reading it. <laughs> so, but you know what? You don't fix it because next time somebody will get back to you and say, There's a time for what it's like. It's okay. <laughs> oh, no, I'm so creative. There will always be other typos. <laughs> Who needs spell check, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Denise chimed in. It's wonderful to be um it's wonder it's a wonderful way to be a hundred percent responsible for what happens to you. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Absolutely. You know, sometimes when we get on these platforms, we all try to be like, I have my stuff together, I'm the expert. <laughs> and I'm like, mm -mm, I don't have my stuff together. Yes. I don't know that any of us do. We can talk about systems and how things need to be and all that sort of stuff, but we're all still working on it, right? Oh, absolutely. We're all a work in progress. And, you know, yeah. the journey is never over. And I always feel like as soon as I complete one system, then it completely changes to something else. <laughs> like, oh. The rules change, right? <laughs> I just got that right and now we're doing something else completely. Ah, so yeah. it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, let me get us back on track. You know, off the road. I'm I'm on vacation, so I'm over here just you know, <laughs> chilling. Not funny. You guys are both delirious, <laughs> both busted in. So this this whole thing is we're just having way too much fun here. I hope the audience is having fun with us. Let us know if you are. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you are. Um, but uh, let's keep going and let's finalize our. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about systems. I forgot to change this one. So it's time to gain knowledge and I need your final tip, right? So think about what is the one Ooh. thing you can help someone systemize by just doing one thing. Ooh. What would that be? Okay. Who's ready? Me. Okay. Let it go. <laughs> okay. So it's one thing, but it's a series of little things. One of my favorite questions to ask people is to write down what are your 50 favorite things. For me, it's things like spending time in nature, fountain pens. I have a beautiful collection of fountain pen flowers. Um, 
you know, making sure that, uh, uh, you know, a whole pile of stuff happens. I love the colour blue. I love, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, chocolate, champagne, green tea, doesn't matter. Write down 50 things that you love. Your family might be on that list, whatever, or not, you know, that's up to you. <laughs> um, but the point of doing that is so that you can incorporate as many of those things into your everyday life as possible. Yes. So, and for me, that starts when I wake up in the morning, do I set the alarm? Do I wake up? Do I go for a walk? Do I exercise? Do I spend time in nature? Do I uh, meditate while I'm, while I'm walking? How, does, how do I set up my day using those 50 favourite things that I absolutely love? How many of those 50 favourite things can I use during my working day? Mm. And then of an evening when I'm finished, how many of those things can I do or use then so it's one thing but i can set up my entire day by incorporating as many of those things as i possibly can or if you know for me overseas travelers is, is on my list <laughs> and if i can't do that every day clearly but i can plan for an overseas trip and then start to look forward to it right so i can give myself this amount of time each day to even look forward to that and if my systems work well in my business and I'm making more money in my business, then it becomes even more exciting because I have more money to spend while I'm away, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be my absolute number one thing is to, is to figure out what your 50 favourite things are and to incorporate as many of those as possible into every single day. So uh, that's why you're called the Wisdom Warrior right there. You earned it. <laughs> That's your title. Yes, I Thank love you. that. And I was so, uh, Belinda was a part of the Sydney conference and I wasn't in the breakout room, but Peggy was. And I overheard this listing of things. And I chuckled because some of the things that came out were very cool, right? In some ways. And one of the things was like sex. And I just died yes. laughing on the floor. <laughs> Someone was like, sex, sex is important. I, was like, I have a vague memory of that somewhere along the line. <laughs> it's been a while. I was like, all the things, and somebody was like, why didn't I put that on my list? It was so funny. And then in chocolate, somebody was like, I love chocolate. Why is that? <laughs> so if you don't, if you get a chance to. to get a chance to either watch the playbacks for the Sydney conference or uh, get a chance to do one of uh, her power of the paw sessions. Uh, I highly recommend it. You definitely want to get in touch with her about that. Thank you for that, that tip. That was amazing. Uh, Thank you. This is why I like doing the conferences too, because I like can understand what you're talking about. I'd be like, Ooh, I have something else to tell you about this really cool thing. Anyway, <laughs> Natalie, again, vacation. I'm sorry. All off the rails. Natalie. <laughs> your one tip for systemizing your business okay well i'm going to answer two things first first i'm going to say i love belinda's ideas they're epic secondly i'm going to say i travel all day i was i've been to israel mexico los angeles and london all today <laughs> i didn't leave my chair i've been Virtual there <laughs> <laughs> i just have to say okay so my one tip really which is a two-part in personal and business and that is don't be scared to throw the system away just chuck it out the door it didn't work it isn't working it's not for now even maybe it worked before um and that ties back to when something goes wrong in your day and you're not having the system that can go and something's come and thrown you off the rails it's all about going with the flow so the same thing happens with systems whether they're business or personal don't be scared to just let it go. Today mm. it's not there. Yes. Or it doesn't belong there. So don't be scared to throw it out the door. <laughs> there you go. I hope you have awakened <laughs> to that reality <laughs> in your life. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. That's amazing. It is absolutely brilliant advice because we are so we are hoarders as humans and we want to keep everything even when it's not working so i love yeah. that piece of advice that's amazing and i guess since y'all those are really good tips i kind of feel a little pressure <laughs> epic 
can't lie. Um, and I'm on vacation brain, so my brain's not yeah. working properly. But <laughs> here's what I will say. Start small. Yeah. The least amount of steps to complete something is probably going to be the most efficient way to do it. It's the straightest, the, uh, from distance between two points is a straight line. And if your system is going zigzag like this, which is what's happening with the show right now, and I'm going to go fix it. <laughs> Simplify the process. That is hot off the presses of a newly, not necessarily newly learned, but newly felt fail. <laughs> if there are too many steps, simplify the process. Yes. Yeah. So make Feeling it the pain dot com. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so this has been so much fun. Uh, thank you for, you know, being on vacation with me, you know, and uh, being on the show today. I really appreciate you both. I would love for everyone to understand exactly how awesome you are by staying connected to you because it's time for, like Yo said yesterday, she sings a song right here. Announcements, announcements, announcements. <laughs> All right. Yes, I got that from camp a long time ago. <laughs> uh, it's still a thing. Keepitsimple.com. Thank you, Denise, for chiming in. Love the co-host off the couch. <laughs> Uh, and we are going to go into our announcements and we'll start with Belinda. How would you like people to connect with you? Ah, well, you feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. There's my um, tag there. Please jump on there and, and we'll have a chat about all sorts of things. Um, my eight week program is coming up shortly. Um, it's depending on where you are in the world, of course, it's partly online. Uh, and partly in person if you're here in Australia or Brisbane particularly, Queensland. Um, but I'm quite happy to do it fully online. It's a great course and it just talks to people about how to become powerful. We've all encountered a pause and whatever that looks like, might be a divorce, a redundancy, a, you know, illness in the family, whatever. How do we overcome that? How do we become powerful out of that? How do we find the silver lining in that? And that's what I teach people in this eight-week course. So I would love to see you on that. Check out um, my LinkedIn profile and we'll have a chat. Talk to you soon. Yes. If you don't do it, you're crazy. You <laughs> need the power of the pause. Uh, and Natalie, I know you have something that kind of goes along with the power of the pause a little bit coming up soon. Do you want to share what's happening with you? Absolutely. We are in this month on the 30th of June, which is the humming. If you would like to awaken that inner song within your heart, then come and join us for our three hour energy healing retreat. You on the shifts and the excitement and the of coming to see what it's about. So we look forward to you connecting with us. Excite. You will find us in the calendar, 30th of June. See you there. See you there. Love it. And I just want to say, I mean, I guess technically I'm biased because I supported her in putting this out there. But what I will say is every time I need a refresher, because Thursdays are my days, and this falls on the, is it the fourth Thursday of every month. That's right the fourth Thursday of every month. And I'm always like, I am too exhausted to do this. I don't think I'm actually gonna be able to make it. Okay, Natalie, let me help you. And by the end of it, I am so relaxed. <laughs> and so like, oh, well, that wasn't work at all. That was amazing. <laughs> so you definitely wanna be a part of it. It's great for healers, for people who support other people. Um, it's great for us because we kind of don't, we do a really great job of taking care of other people. We do a horrible job of taking care of ourselves. <laughs> and the beautiful part about these events is that all of the healers are healing each other and you can see them in the other on, on the other side, like, yes, I will take this sound bath right now. And then I'm going to 
also share how we're going to do some some tapping or some throat work or whatever it is so, so that we can kind of really get rejuvenated. It's an amazing event. Belinda, you should totally come in mm. early in the morning yeah. for you. Uh, but it might be worth it. <laughs> it might be worth it. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you join the Mink Life community, we have a recording. So yeah. you can always go and listen to that at a time that suits you best. You just need three hours and you're going to align from root to crown. And oh, yeah. I love that. I forgot that we were doing it. that. Thanks for reminding me. It's Denise up. sent an emoji. I can't put that on the screen, but it's really cute. A little <laughs> serene. Okay. So, uh, so what other announcements do we have? Well, like Natalie said, you can join the community. Now, here's the thing. We are a group of thought leaders, change makers, coaches, and experts who are literally coming together to support thought leaders, coaches, <laughs> and experts, and anybody else who needs to support. We have a community system that is like no other in that you can be two things, brilliant, and dumb at exactly the same time. <laughs> you can be in your zone of genius and amazing at what you do and also completely clueless about technology or completely clueless about something else. And this community is a no judgment zone, right? You can be all those things. At a, you can be amazing at sales and sucking at life or amazing at life and sucking at sales. And it's okay. It is completely okay in our community because we are going to be there to give you a big giant hug. And we want you to join us in our community. There's so many amazing people from literally all over the world. We're missing Canada. Uh, what Denise is kind of chiming in in the chat. So she's holding it down for Canada and also the UK. Uh, we have uh, members in the UK and all over the, uh, all over the United States. Uh, so if you are interested in being a part of the community, you can go to minklifeuniversity.com to join us. If you are curious about this conference I've mentioned that Natalie was a moderator for and Belinda, oops, that way, Belinda <laughs> was a speaker on, uh, all of our community members participate in our global virtual conferences. So if you want to become a dynamic speaker on our conferences, we would love to have you. I, I don't know about you guys, but every time we do one, I always go like, oh my gosh, I needed to, I needed to know that information right there. That was exactly what I needed. Uh, so join us uh, and be another thought leader, change maker, coach, or expert on our platform. Ha ha! There goes Denise's flag representing. There we go. Uh, represent for Canada. Oh, Colleen chimed in as well, saying, I love that I can be brilliant and dumb at the same time. Right? I think it's yeah. genius to be able to do that. Anyway, I digress. We have one last announcement. I'll get to it in a second. I got to find my spot again. Uh, and we also have the opportunity for you to hang out with us on the show right here yeah. in this lovely space. If you are interested in being on the show and hanging out in YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook all at the same time, you can do that by being a guest the show. We want to hear from you. We want to get to know you. We want to get motivated, stay inspired, keep networking, and gain knowledge with you. So go to Ming's Life Motivation forward slash live so that you can be a part of this experience. I think I've covered it all. I don't think there's anything else we can do. We do have this another one. chat. What's that? Join us, play big, or go home. Yeah, why not? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We're trying to change the world here, people. We don't have time for this play <laughs> small stuff. Uh, and then Cassie chimed in, love being awesome and a disaster at the same time. I'm telling you, it's the most amazing thing to not have to be on all the time. And this community is the place that you want to do that in. So anyway, totally off the rails, but I'm just under time. The max was 45 minutes and we're at 43, so we're doing okay. I want to thank you all for being here on what we call the Think Life Motivation Live uh, on a vacation day for me. Uh, and... <laughs> We will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Belinda and, and Natalie, for uh, waking up or staying up uh, to be on the show. <laughs> and for all of our co-hosts off the couch who chimed in on this show, we love you all. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.